guys in this video we are going to see a mesh analysis problem with a super mesh and here the question is asking to find out this current i1 and i2 and let's go ahead and create our meshes so we are going to assign mesh 1 for here and mesh 2 for this one and mesh 3 for this one right so it, it doesn't matter which direction you pick but it's always better to keep in same direction right so this is i1 i2 and i3 now if you notice here in mesh analysis we always use curve of voltage law and curve of voltage law we have to have voltage everywhere but if you look at this one right here we don't have any voltage we have a current source but we don't know what's the voltage across this current source right so in this kind of situation we use super mesh super mesh is basically we consider the whole thing as a one mesh and solve the problem okay so let's write some bigger so this whole thing is going to be just one mesh right so we are going to create mesh equation for this one like all together one now let's go ahead and create our mesh analysis equations for the mesh one mesh one the current is going from negative to positive so this is going to be negative 24 and then this is going along the ohms so that's going to be just plus 10 i1 and here it's going through this 40 ohm so, so that's going to be plus 40 and i1 and if you look at this one i2 is going in the opposite direction so direction in the 40 ohm so this is going to be negative i2 right here and that's it after that that's equal to zero and uh, let's look at the super mesh but before i go for that it's better to keep this one simplified okay let's simplify this one this is going to be negative 24 and uh, we can divide everything by 2 and we will get negative 12 plus 5 i1 and this is going to be just 20 i1 minus 20 i2 is equal to 0 and also we can add this i1s together so that's going to be 25 i1 minus 20 i2 is going to be equal to 12 so this is our first equation now let's go for the super mesh super mesh let's start from this 20 right so 20 i2 20 i2 then we go along this one this 30 i3 so plus 30 i3 and then this is going along this 20 so 20 i3 20 i3 then we are coming back right here to the 40 40 it's i2 so it's going to be i continue this one right here 40 plus 40 i2 but in 40 we have i1 also there right so i1 is coming in the opposite direction so we put minus i1 and then that's it that's equal to 0 now let's simplify this one and here we can divide everything by 10 and if you divide everything by 10 that's going to give you 2 i2 plus 3 i3 plus 2 i3 plus 4 i2 minus 4 i1 is going to be equal to 0 and here let's add the like terms 2 i2 plus 4 i2 that's going to be 6 i2 and then 3 i3 plus 2 i3 that's going to be 5 i3 and here we have negative 4 i1 right negative 4 i1 and this is a that's equal to 0 this is our equation 2 and if you notice here we have two unknown variable but here we have three unknown variable so we need one more equation to solve this problem now to find one more equation if you look at this note right here along the current source if you look at this one this 5 ampere is entering right and i2 also entering this node and i3 is leaving this node i2 is entering i3 is leaving so from this one we can create an equation so we can say that Kirchhoff's current law we can apply Kirchhoff's current law whatever the current enter must exit so 5 plus i2 should be equal to i3 right and from this one we can simplify this equation second equation we can just plug this one right here third equation into second and that's going to be become 6 i2 plus 5 times instead of i3 i plug this one so this is going to be 5 plus i2 minus 
for i1 is equal to 0 therefore this is going to be 6 i2 then we are going to have 25 plus 5 i2 minus 4 i1 is equal to 0 now we can add the like terms so this is going to be 11 i2 minus 4 i1 should be equal to negative 25 negative 25 so this is our equation simplified equation let's call this one 4 now we have equation 1 and 4 and let's put them together so you can see the relationship so here we have negative 4 i1 and uh, plus 11 i2 is equal to negative 25 and this is equation number 4 okay so now we have created two equations with two unknown variables so we can now go ahead and solve for this this one right now to solve this one we can use Kramer's rule or there are many different methods I'm going to use the Kramer's rule but I'm going to use this one right here so let's get rid of this part okay I get rid of this one right all we need is this equation now let's get rid of this one and we are going to apply Kramer's rule okay so let's array assign them in a matrix so first we have 25 negative 4 and then we have negative 20 11 and in the other side of the equation we have this one 12 and negative 25 right so this is i1 i2 equal to 12 and negative 25 now to find uh, i1 what we do is we swap this one with this one and then we find the determinant so i1 is going to be equal to determinant of the top part determinant of this one um, if you swap that's going to be 12 minus 25 and here we are going to have negative 20 11 over the determinant of the actual ma matrix so that's going to be determinant of 25 negative 4 minus 20 11 to find the determinant of 2 by 2 matrix if you remember when we have a b c d the determinant of this one is going to be just a d minus b c right cross multiplication of this one minus b c so that's what we are going to do right here 12 minus 11 actually 12 times 11 that's going to be 132 and then uh, negative 25 times negative 20 that's going to be 500 so this is going to be minus 500 right here and in the bottom we have this one 25 times 11 that's going to be 275 75 and negative 20 times 4 that's going to be 100 no no 80 negative 80 right negative 80 so we are here we get negative answer on the top that's going to be if you calculate this one you should get negative 500 minus 132 mm, let's calculate that one 500 132 so this is going to be 10 minus 2 the 8 and 9 minus 3 is 6 and then we are, we are going to have 4 minus 1 that's going to be 368 so this is going to become 368 negative 368 divided by 195 right 195 and if you solve for this one you should get i1 is equal to negative 1.89 ampere so this is our i1 and i2 it's the same thing you, you just uh, so you keep this one as it is first one now to find the i2 you swap this one with this one and find the determinant on top and you divide this one by original matrix and if you find that one you will get i2 is equal to i2 is equal to negative 2.96 since we have i1 and i2 here i1 we found out that's negative 1.89 ampere so since we have i1 and i2 we can find our this uh, i1 and i2 i3 we can find i3 using this formula this one right here i3 is equal to 5 plus i2 so i3 is going to be i3 is going to be equal to 5 plus i2 we know that i2 is negative 
2.96 so minus 2.96 and you should get 2.04 ampere so this is our i3 now let's see what happened to this small i1 small i1 if you notice here this is i1 minus i2 here and i1 i2 is easy because i3 whatever the i3 value we are having that's going to be equal to small i2 right because if you notice here i3 is the only current that's flowing through this right i3 is equal to i2 so this one is equal to small i2 and this small i1 is going to be equal to i1 is going along with the i1's direction so plus i1 and going opposite to the i2's direction so this one is minus i2 i2 is going opposite to this direction minus i2 i1 is what i1 is negative 1.89 and uh, minus i2 so it is going to be minus minus plus 2.96 so 2.96 minus 1.89 i have to get rid of some of these parts to calculate that one okay i get rid of these things so this is going to be 2.96 minus 1.89 okay 16 minus 9 that's gonna become 7 16 minus 9 is 7 so 8 minus 0 2 minus 1 1.07 1 so this is going to be the small i1 is equal to 1.07 ampere now let's list all of them i1 we found out negative 1.89 ampere i2 we found out negative 2.96 ampere and i3 we found out that is 2.04 ampere and that is equal to small i2 and small i1 is equal to 1.07 ampere and that's our final solution i hope this helps thanks for watching